Good afternoon, Your Excellency, Ambassador Gareth Bailey, Ambassador of the UK to Egypt, Your Excellency, dear friend, Dr. Yasmin Fouad, Minister of Environment, Dr. Mahmoud Mohideen, the Executive Director at the International Monetary Fund, and Dr. Mohammed Farid, Chairman of the Financial Regulatory Affairs. I would have loved to join you today, but unfortunately, I have a meeting in Al Alamein, so I had to go back to the Northern Coast. Nonetheless, it's my pleasure to be among you to celebrate the graduation of nine low carbon startups from various sectors, including agriculture, energy, transportation, industry and manufacturing, as well as waste management under the Climate Finance Accelerator Program, which is financed by the United Kingdom, Department of Energy Security and Net Zero, as well as implemented by Flat6 Labs, all very important partners to us. Tonight is a good opportunity to witness the innovative solutions by the nine startups aimed at tackling climate change. Over the past three months, these projects have received comprehensive financial, technical, climate mitigation, and gender equality, as well as social inclusion focused support and advice from the CFA program experts. The accelerator is a good example for the good collaboration between Egypt and the UK in the climate action space as they are implementing projects with a total financing of close to 870 million sterling pounds as grants, guarantees, as well as technical assistance in the energy, water, and food sectors. Ladies and gentlemen, empowering startups and private sector participation are key drivers for innovation, economic development, as well as accelerating progress towards the sustainable development goals. Effective, inclusive, and accountable governance is essential for strengthening private sector participation, as well as facilitating a just energy transition. Innovation is also crucial to tackle climate change issues. Nowadays, the aim is for technology and innovation to make a significant contribution towards attaining the goals of Egypt's Vision 2030 by fostering an environment that promotes innovation and enables the efficient and effective production, dissemination, as well as marketing of knowledge. Egypt is rapidly emerging as a hub for startup innovation and entrepreneurship in the Middle East and North Africa, driven by the combination of government support, entrepreneurial spirit, and the large and increasingly tech-savvy population. Dear guests, there's an international, regional, as well as national consensus on the crucial role of the sustainable management of environmental systems and natural resources. This is evident in Egypt's commitment as a party to numerous international agreements concerning the environment and addressing climate change, as well as the resulting obligations. The government of Egypt has implemented a large number of national projects and is now opening up prospects for more green investments with the participation of the private sector and will raise the ambition of its nationally determined contributions in accordance with its commitment to the Paris Agreement and to set a practical example in leading international climate action and raising its ambition. In alignment with advancing climate financing, Egypt launched the Sharm el-Sheikh Guidebook for Just Financing, integrating the concept of justice into climate finance through 12 guiding principles. These principles support the right of developing countries to development through equitable pathways, the creation of an enabling environment, as well as integration of just financing across all financial entities. This ensures the right of developing countries to access appropriate climate finance in terms of quantity and type alongside the ability to bear costs and emphasize the additionality of finance to the current as well as committed financial flows. Distinguished part participants, it is worth highlighting the importance of enhancing sustainability efforts by establishing multilateral approaches based on close partnerships between various parties. The Ministry of Planning, Economic Development and International Cooperation is working to coordinate between development partners, various national parties, the private sector, many stakeholders to create constructive partnerships that enhance sustainability and development efforts. There are three main criteria shared in all these strategies. Inclusion of various groups, whether youth or women, in addition to the green transformation as well as digital transformation. The private sector's commitment to these pillars in addition to environmental, social and governance standards enhances its ability to benefit from concessional financing and investments provided by different international partners. And what we are witnessing here today is an example. In light of the above, the Ministry is also focusing on its work with two main elements, industrial development as well as human capital development, whether through public investments by the government or co collaboration 
with different financing institutions. As we are approaching COP29, I look forward to demonstrating many of these examples, examples of partnerships that have helped youth, have helped growth, and have helped technology advancement and innovation in the country. Once again, a warm thank you to the UK government and to everybody who worked on the accelerator to be able to witness today this graduation. And again, unfortunately, I couldn't be with you, but I'm praising and applauding everyone who is there today. Thank you very much.